Hi, my name's Andrew, and along with sailing and board games, I also like rugby. And after watching a, one of Australia's uh, national rugby broadcast media thingies on the television last night, I feel prompted to make a comment, or at least ask a few questions. For those that aren't aware, there's this current feeling in Australia that shrinking Super Rugby or Australian Super Rugby teams from five to four will be good for the sport at a national level. I would have thought that for rugby at a national level to be healthy, it should draw players from every corner of our continent. And to that end, I actually think there should be a top level rugby team in every capital. Adelaide doesn't have one, Hobart doesn't have one, Darwin doesn't have one. I believe the rationale at the moment is that doesn't matter. Talent scouts will get down there and find talent and bring it back to Sydney or maybe Queensland if they're lucky. Um, and that's where those people will apply their trade. Well, let's just take a look at that model for a bit. There will be in every capital city, some rugby tragics, young athletes, who for them, rugby is the only game. That's, this is a definite demographic. But what about the rest of the possible Wallaby demographic? What about young sports athletes, dudes, blokes, girls, who love playing sport, but aren't really tied to any code, but could be a rugby star? I actually think this demographic is a lot bigger than the previous demographic, and this is not being considered. If you are a young athlete in Perth at the moment, you are most likely going to play football, i.e. association football, or Aussie rules, AFL. It is far less likely that you will play rugby because the Western Force is now gone. This jumper, is not here for you to wear anymore. If you're a rugby tragic, sure, you're going to play for your club and, you know, maybe a talent scout will see you and whisk you away to a bigger, better life on the East Coast. But what if you're not? Let's explore that. Young guy gets up, he's been playing first grade for his local West Australian or Tasmanian or South Australian club for a little while. And doing well, doing well, pleasing the coaches, scoring tries or whatever it is he does on the rugby field. And he says to his parents, hey, I'd like to be a sports star for a living. Just consider that for a moment. Imagine he walked out to the breakfast table and said, oh, I want to be a writer or a poet, or I want to be an actor, or I want to be a rock star. What is the normal response to a parent, or in fact, a friend even, to someone who says that, you know, early in their life. Let's go and get a job. Well, here's the thing. If that young guy is a rugby tragic with like dyed in the wool rugby parents, they might support him in that action. And they might be happy for him to move to another state for two or three years in the hope that he'll get to sit on the bench for the Waratahs or the Brumbies, or one of those other teams, because Experience in Western Australia has showed for the wonderful people who've traveled west to do exactly that for the Western Force, that it often takes a number of years of doing nothing but training before you even get a chance to run on the field. It's a high risk, hard work thing. And here's the other thing. You may not make it. You might get injured. Or if you're that guy running around for your local first grade club, Wests, Uni Associates or whatever, on the day that talent scout comes and has a look, because your coach has said, come and have a look, you might be having a shocker. It happens to all of us. And then you're probably going to be overlooked because a lot of it's just human nature that people often don't get a second chance. Whereas if you can aspire to wearing something like this in your state, you're there all the time, and the people representing that jumper are there all the time. They will see you lots. It won't just be one trip to Western Australia every few months. It'll be a weekly weekend thing. And just on the thought of like, I would like to be a sports star, here's the thing. 
it's probably easier to become a rock star or a writer or an actor because if you apply yourself to hard work, the demographic that judges you is bigger. It's loads of people everywhere. You play your little gigs with your guitar in pubs in Perth like two or three nights a week. It's going to take years. But after a while, you're going to have a following because if you have the passion, you're probably good enough and that's how that works. So funnily enough, that's a lot less risk than being a sports star. So if you're a young athlete in Western Australia who likes playing sport and is considering rugby, the fact that this jumper no longer exists possibly means you'll go and play with your mates in another code. And I don't think the Australian Rugby Union has considered that. Because let's face it, as a young person, moving to the Eastern States to play in a big club or just actually to train with them to see if you're good enough for a couple of years might be really exciting. But I bet for a lot of people, they would rather be with their family and friends. So when you have a bad day, you can come and sit down with your mate or your mum or your dad or your granddad, they're very wise sometimes, and just say, today was shit. And that's not something you can easily do in a new town thousands of kilometres away from home. Which makes succeeding harder, actually. Talent needs to be developed at home, and I don't think the Australian Rugby Union has considered this. Last night, a guy whose opinions and views I always look forward to hearing said something on television that made my heart sink. Rod Kafer, I've always respected you, and that took a hell of a dent last night when you stood in front of a whole lot of graphs that would make sense to somebody who just wasn't thinking. If you're going to put graphs up of the crowds in Western Australia and Melbourne, why would you leave out the crowds in Queensland, New South Wales, the ACT? I don't understand. Like, at least do your logic honestly. And if you're going to say, oh, Western Australia has only produced 1.5 wallabies a year since the force has actually been in existence. That's like one of the worst logical fallacies I've ever heard. Sure it has if you divide the number of wallabies by the total time that the force has been existence, in, in existence. But that's not the point. We're talking about here and now, not 10 years ago. And at the moment, the force has bundles of run-on players that are from Perth or Western Australia, which only a few years ago was not the case. These things take time, and I would like to point out to you that while you are obviously now in the pocket of the Australian Rugby Union being an employee, if you just put your little hands over that hemline, that final row of stitching, and look left or right, you're probably going to see a cock. Anyway, back to my initial thing about we need a team in every state. Of course we do. Netball does it. They don't get 10,000 people to a game. Um, basketball does it. They don't always get huge crowds either, but they manage to do it. Water polo even does it. I just went and Googled it this morning. There's a national water polo league. Somehow the management body of water polo manages to fund and organize a league that is Australia wide. And I bet they don't get much more than a thousand people to a game, if that, but they make it work. Why can't the Australian rugby union do this?